Can you actually teach art? This probably sounds like a strange question, especially coming from an art teacher. I went to school to teach art. I helped build a school that taught art. And I even taught middle and high school art in that very school for 11 years. So why are we even here? Why is this question even being asked? Well, because at a fundamental level, art is different from other things. At a very basic level, teaching and learning are different. You can be taught history, for example. Someone can get up in the front of the room and in an exciting or generally a very boring way, tell you all manner of things. They can weave tales of wars and weapons, travel across the ocean, the rise and fall of empires. You, as the students, can simply sit there, learning, absorbing. If you have a good teacher, they might even involve you, ask you leading questions, get you to have epiphanies of your own, where you can understand some component of human nature better than you did before. You can be taught history. You can even be taught things like science and math, though they might take a little bit more work. All of the struggles, all of the practice is simply to hit those moments where you understand more fully the thing at hand. A good teacher can teach you, but even without one, you can learn by simply ramming your head into the material for long enough. But what about art? Sure, art does have its moments of epiphany, the understanding of mixing colors, of atmospheric perspective, or how to draw objects in space. But beyond these, and perhaps including them and many other quote-unquote simple things, well, you are left to your own devices. See, in the same way no one can quite teach you how to play the violin, no one can quite teach you how to make art. Oh, they can teach you about art. You can memorize things day in and day out, just like you learn the names of all the fingerings and techniques on your instrument. But to truly know how to draw a thing, I am unsure that that can be taught. No, indeed, it seems almost that the job of an art teacher is to put you in a situation where you have to struggle, where you have to learn how to do the thing that is put before you. It is strange. Strange for me to pull apart, too. These things that I likely know have processed and chewed on her in the back of my head for so many years, but I think essentially it comes down to this. No one can teach you how to make art, but it can be learned. And potentially, you can teach yourself. So let's start pulling these things apart. And I would love to hear from you in the comments what you think about this idea. I am, of course, one human being, one that has a lot of experience when it comes to working alongside artists and helping guide them on their path, teaching, one might say. But my perspective is, of course, limited to my experiences, so I would love to hear what your initial thoughts are in the comments below. First of all, though, what is the point of all of this? Why bother talking about if it can be taught or not? Very simply, if you approach art like many other subjects, you can be very easily disheartened. The sheer quantity of time that it takes to improve, to get good, to do what you want can be very daunting. And if you think coming into it that art is going to be like math or history, that you are going to learn a bunch of facts and be proficient, that you can learn the right way to draw ahead once and be okay, then you are going to be sorely disappointed. Art is wonderful, it is beautiful, and it is a good thing for humans to engage in. The whole purpose of this discussion is to make the case that art is different. Give it the time it needs. Stick to it. It's worth it. I promise you. As we begin, I am not suggesting that art cannot be taught because it is subjective. I know that gets thrown around quite a bit in the art community, but I have a far less sympathetic view on the objectivity versus subjectivity of art in general. There are objective things that you should learn in order to improve your skills, in order to be a better artist or to be better at making art. This is easily observable when you traipse around the internet looking for videos or tutorials on the basics, figuring out how to draw a tree or how to paint figures. The fundamentals are, in fact, fundamental. No, I am unsure you can teach art because so much of it is based on practice, based on hard work, based on just doing the thing over and over again until you improve. Are there shortcuts? Yes, of course. Are there epiphanies along the way? Sure. But by and large, practicing and working through your own personal struggles, usually mental, 
is how you are going to improve as an artist. No teacher can practice for you, understand exactly where your hangup is, can help you with your anxiety when it comes to perfectionism. All of those things are not taught nearly as much as they are worked through. So how do we actually learn art then? If it is something that cannot necessarily be taught, or at least it's difficult to come to a consensus about whether it can be taught, how do you actually learn it in the first place? Well, it's going to be different from person to person, which I'm sure is not a surprise if you are listening this far into the podcast. You've probably listened to other podcasts like this, or videos, or you've been in art classes before, and you know that art is very different from one person to another. However, there are some basics that I think are going to really help you in this pursuit. First of all, you need to understand what it is that you want out of the thing. This is not particularly different than if you were learning an instrument. Some people might start playing an instrument just with the idea of being proficient, and I would argue that is actually a justifiable and reasonable goal. So maybe your goal with art is simply proficiency. But I can guarantee you that your definition of proficiency is not the same as everyone else's. So think about what it means to you. Now, for many artists, many would-be artists, there is something deeper than just the level of proficiency or expression. It is based on the goal to do a thing, to produce a comic, a manga, an animation, a book, a particular series of artworks, to have the ability to create portraits that look like people, to draw things from your imagination and your mind that resemble in some small degree the things that occur inside your mind's eye. Whatever it is that is important to you, the thing that you want to dedicate time toward, the thing that has drawn you toward art in the first place, you need to hone in on that. You need to understand it. And there's a really specific reason for that. Once you know what that thing is, you actually have the beginnings of your roadmap for learning what it is you want to and need to learn in your pursuit of that particular end. This gives you direction, and that's the first thing that you need. So perhaps the first thing that you actually need in order to begin learning art is a sense of direction. Now, a lot of people get the sense of direction from teachers, from advisors in their life first. There is not an innate problem with this, but there are some very pervasive issues that occur. If you are, for example, drawn to the arts and you want to make something of it, you want to make a career out of drawing or painting, it's very, very easy to lean on professionals and to lean on teachers. I, of course, have been the subject of this many times, and in my youth, I took pride in this. I thought this was such a cool thing that these kids are coming to me and asking me what they should do. As I got older, I was more terrified when this happened because I had become more humble, more understanding of the impact of the words that I shared. Many young artists will go to art school or will take art classes and just assume that the things that the teacher is preaching, that they are walking you through, that they are encouraging you to do or not to do, are specifically tailored toward them. And frankly, this is almost never true. When you had a teacher who told you that you needed to focus on landscapes, on drawing portraits, that you should avoid drawing anime or manga, those particular pieces of instruction do not apply to every artist. They could have applied to you specifically. My specific goals involve bits and pieces of those, but I was told so frequently not to draw anime and manga that I spent far less time on stylized drawing, and now, frankly, my drawing suffers for it. I am very good at drawing from reference, but I have had to put considerable time into learning how to draw from my imagination because in the entirety of my academic, artistic pursuits, no one ever valued being able to draw from imagination. And yet, it's the most iconic thing that most of us want from art, is to be able to take something out of our head and put it onto the page. It almost feels like the teachers that I had at art college couldn't do that, and so they developed a layer of resentment toward it because it was a skill that was obscured to them. 
And that's tragic, if that's true. But it also might just be me being pessimistic. It's very, very easy for us as human beings, communal creatures, to lean on the advice of others when it comes to what we want and what we need out of our artistic pursuits. And if you are very aware, very introspective, you have a good understanding of who you are as an artist, you can take that advice and you can leave that advice. But when you are young or when you don't understand yourself particularly well, it is dangerous to take that advice without a grain of salt and sometimes without a colossal mountain of salt. So I would encourage you, wherever you are in your art journey, take some time and think about what it is that you desire. What do you desire to make and how do you desire to make it? Because those two pieces of information will point you in the direction that you want to go and they will start to lay the groundwork for what you need to know and the skills that you need to practice. Well, I don't really want to reduce the concept of learning art too much. I have a tendency to be a little bit rambly and a little bit verbose, as you might be able to tell, since we're about 10 to 11 minutes in at this point. But it does come down to several very simple facets when it comes to learning art. Practice, analyzing your practice, applying what you have learned, and then basically rinsing and repeating that process until the end of days and the heat death of the universe. Let's break that down a little though. I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. And if you want a dedicated podcast or even a video with demonstrable ways of doing this, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to do it. So first of all, let's talk about what I mean by practice. Practice is one of those strange things that we all have a base level understanding of, it seems. It means to do the thing in small form, right? If you are practicing basketball, one of the easiest ways to practice basketball is to simply play basketball, to play it with lower stakes perhaps, to play it with some of your friends, to play it and stop and then analyze in the middle, but I, I suppose I'm getting ahead of myself. So if you are to practice art, you are doing small scale versions of the things that you want to do. You want to make a comic book. Then you are going to focus on single panels, maybe single pages, and hone those skills. That is practice. It's also important to, to talk about stakes though, just like the basketball analogy. If you are playing a game with your friends, not against another team in whatever league you're in, the stakes are lower. If you lose, who cares? It's possible, conceivable even, that you don't keep score in a situation like that. Whereas when you are playing in an actual game, there are professionals who are keeping score, professionals who are grading and evaluating everything you do. So if you're working on that single page of a manga, of a comic, your goal isn't really to do anything with that besides practice the skill. And that's probably the actual line between like project and practice is a project is a finished thing that has some purpose involved in its being completed. Whereas the practice, you're trying to hone a skill. You're trying to work on a thing. If the practice turns out well, that's wonderful, but it's not really the goal. The goal of your practice is to focus on a small scale version of the big thing so that you get better at the big thing when you decide to actually do it. Most practice though, artistically, is focused on a specific portion of that, not just a small version of the whole. And this is going to be something along the lines of our back to our basketball analogy, focusing on your free throws, focusing on dribbling, focusing on passing. What does that look like artistically? That looks like experimenting with compositions, doing lots of little thumbnails and working on what makes a composition interesting to you, what best achieves the compositions that you're looking for. Practicing on three-dimensionality, drawing very obscure random shapes and then figuring out how light and shadow are going to affect those, what they're going to look like in reality. If you're working on creature design, you're not gonna be doing only full-blown illustrated creatures. You're gonna be doing lots of quick studies, probably analyzing real animals and thinking about what makes them what they are, and then articulating that in your own way. 
And practice involves a lot of reference work for artists. In the same way that it does for music, if you are working on practicing your violin skills, you are going to play pieces of music written by other people. You're going to practice them. You're probably going to listen to other violinists. Try to hone in on what kind of techniques they're using, what makes their playing better than yours. The same is true when it comes to art. You're gonna not only look at reality, look at an octopus, look at a grasshopper, look at caves, but you're going to look at how other artists have done things too. There's nothing wrong with referencing reality or referencing other artists' work. In fact, it's one of the best ways you can get better and you can improve. But that kind of wraps our head around what practice is. We all know it, but it's like one of those words you read in a book, you know what it means in context. Sitting down to actually define it can be a little difficult. Let's move on to the second then, the second stage here, which is analyzing your practice. For some people, this happens very naturally. I am one of those people. It's very easy for me just to wrap my head around what I'm practicing and how I'm practicing it in the moment. But that trait seems to not be the most common among artists. So if it's you, count your blessings. But otherwise, when you finish your practice, maybe a couple minutes later, maybe a couple days later, go back and take a look at it. If you drew a hundred heads, you're practicing portraits, Go back and figure out what you do well and what you don't do well. Maybe you have a tendency to put the eyes too close to each other. Maybe you have a tendency to mix up you know, the, the gender qualifying components. You were really going for a feminine character and you made them more masculine. I have a tendency to do this all the time. I really struggle with making just a quick sketch look like a woman or a man. I struggle with the particulars of the human face that make them look that way. Sure, I can sit down and copy a picture of one, but if I'm gonna to try to design one from my mind, I don't have those skills yet. And in analyzing my own practice, I can see those deficits. So once you have your practice done, whatever that practice was, take a few minutes and look back at it. Understand where your shortcomings are because that points the direction for your next batch of practice. Now, the one after this, the third of these strategies on actually learning art, I think is the one that gets skipped over by a lot of artists, at least in the beginning years. And this is applying what you've learned. I am very guilty of this. I am very guilty of just practicing and feeling like, oh, I'll just practice until I'm good enough. Well, you know what? You'll never be good enough. That's not how it works. If you just practice isolated things, you get really good at doing the isolated thing. You don't necessarily get good at conglomerating it and putting it together into something that is what you want to actually produce. In my case, I spent so much time learning anatomy and drawing humans from reference, and I took classes on it. And I never got to the point that I wanted to be at because I never took the risk and actually tried to apply the things that I was practicing and learning. I want to design characters. I want to make comics and things like that. And just focusing on the difference between the pelvis and the abdomen and the head and their relationships with one another was a good way for me to distract myself from the thing that I actually wanted to do. So after you have practiced a thing for a time, you have to apply what you've learned through that practice. And generally, I would put this into a category called projects, which I mentioned earlier. What you are seeing play out in the background right now is a project. This is not practice. The practice exists in a sketchbook to the side, and each of these drawings is kind of practice for the next one. But this is a project. My goal is to execute a finished thing. Its goal, its purpose, is to demonstrate what I have learned and to demonstrate an actual image. So if the goal of your art is to learn something, it is probably practice. If the goal of your art is to be a finished thing that exists in this finished state, it is probably a project. These terms are not ubiquitous, but this is my way of looking at it. And regardless of what terms you use, I think you're gonna find yourself in the same manner of categorization. This step is super important though, because it is the coalescing of all of the individual tasks and skills that you've been practicing. This is what you want to do. This is your book, your comic, your manga, your portraits, your landscapes, your paintings. 
And if you never actually engage in this, you don't have a way to see how you're growing. You don't have a way to see how you're progressing. So this is incredibly important. I struggle to say that it's the most important of the three because that's really difficult, but I think it probably is. If you're gonna choose only one of these to do, this is probably the one to do. Because if you did nothing but practice, you're gonna have a lot of sketchbooks full of a lot of sketches that lead nowhere. Now, if you enjoy that, totally fine. Maybe you like studying things, totally fine. But if your ambition is to make projects and you're not making projects, you're missing your own mark that you set up. And of course, if all you do is analyze things, you never get anything done. Granted, I've been guilty of that too, of thinking that my time spent planning, of building an art curriculum is actually going to do anything for me. It's not. I love planning, I love spreadsheets, but I have been trapped where I tricked myself into thinking I was doing a thing and I just wasn't. I was feeling the dopamine hit of productivity when I hadn't drawn a thing and I hadn't improved in my drawing at all either. So I think these three, in unity, in repetition continually, are how you actually learn art. This is something then that is not taught, though a teacher can help guide you, and we're gonna move into that right now. What is the actual role of a teacher then? This is obviously something that I wrestle with, something that I think about and chew on, especially these days. What is my role? What was my role as an art teacher? Was I actually helpful in any regard? What is my purpose? Well, teachers in general, good art teachers, point you in the right direction. And this is right off the bat something that's going to get into some objectivity and subjectivity arguments. What do you mean by right direction? Well, considering we're talking about what makes a good art teacher, what they can contribute, we're talking about an art teacher who understands you and your specific desires and needs. So if you are a blossoming artist and you have a good teacher, that teacher is capable of looking at your journey, the path laid out before you, and with a little bit more foresight because of their time, their age, hopefully their wisdom, they might be capable of pointing you in a direction that might seem odd to you, but is going to help you achieve your particular goals. This is something that in my early years of teaching, I was not good at. I had learned the methods that I had learned, and so like most humans, I wrongly assumed that that was how everyone should or needs to learn. The longer I taught, the more I realized that artists are a very diverse group, and that all of these different goals are not only okay and valid, but there are very divergent paths on the way towards those goals. So later on in my teaching career, I found myself really spending a lot of time trying to get to know the students. That was the most important thing. If I had a kid who came in just because they wanted a class that was relaxing versus a student who came in as an engineering student who wanted to learn something that was new and difficult versus the kid who wanted to be a professional artist in galleries versus the kid who wanted to be a graphic designer versus the, I could go on and on and on. Each of those kids needed a different version of me as their teacher. And that's hard, it took a lot of time. So in the first couple weeks of the school year, I would always set things up so that it just gave me time to get to know the students. Lots of practice, lots of early projects, things for them to hone skills, for me to understand what they knew and didn't know, but also time just to talk with them, to learn who they were and what they needed. Predominantly, this was what I did at the high school levels, advanced high school levels because if it's younger kids, I'm just teaching them how to draw, teaching them how to paint. But with the older students, so much of my time was dedicated toward getting to know them. Because only once I knew them and their desires and their skill levels, could I really point them in the right direction. So that's kind of the first thing that an art teacher can do. The benefit is they can point you in that right direction. They can also help guide you back toward your desired path. And this is, again, in that guiding kind of language. I think it's really important though, it's toward your desired path. 
because it's very easy as an artist to just do what we are comfortable doing. Maybe you are in an art class, you have a good art teacher, and they know exactly what you want to do, but you are not doing the things that are going to help you there. They know that you want to be a professional concept artist, but you just keep drawing the same things over and over again because it's not stressful. It's comfortable. That teacher can guide you back toward the things that you need to be doing if you really want to achieve that goal. And you know, as well as I do, we as humans will often avoid the things that we need to do and instead do the things that are easy. We won't read the book that we need to read. We'll go play some video games. We won't get our chores done because there's something else that's more entertaining. We'll accidentally binge an entire season of something on Netflix when there was 10,000 other things that we really needed to be doing. So a good art teacher can help guide you back towards your desired path. They can call you out, hold you accountable. And I think it's really important here to say not their desired path not what they would have done if they were in your shoes, not what was done to them, not the path that they followed, not what they think you should be doing. This is something that's very pervasive in the art community. Leaders and mentors can very much take a side where their goal is to vicariously live through you, to push you towards the things that either validate the decisions they made or that they can then feel good about later. And yes, this is a very normal human thing and it's also bad. It's wrong. It is wrong to take a young person and guide them in the direction that you think they should go. It is not wrong to teach them. It is not wrong to tell them that you think they should go this direction, but to override another human's desires and ambitions, replacing them with yours because you think you know better is the height of hubris and can be very, very damaging to young artists. But a good teacher will help guide you back towards your desired path. Good teachers can also help you to sift through resources because there are simply so many. If you were deciding to learn how to draw today, you hopped on YouTube and you Googled how to draw beginner's guide, you are going to be inundated with so many things and you're not gonna have the skills or the knowledge to sift through them. A good art teacher can point you in the right direction for other instructors, classes, books, skills and techniques that are actually going to serve your purposes. This is something that I run into a lot nowadays, not necessarily artistically, but in basically every other facet of my life. I have the ability, with the internet the way it is now, to research almost anything I could want to research. I have a fan, a vent in my bathroom upstairs that needs to be replaced. I can go do the research and figure out everything I need to do. But you know what? I have a friend who's an electrician. He's very proficient in these things. He knows most of what I am going to research right off the bat. I could spend several hours researching things. Or I could call my friend and go, hey, when you have a day, could you pop over here for 15 minutes and take a look? In those 15 minutes of his time, I am going to learn more and understand more than I would in hours. Not to mention that all of the things that I read, in the back of my mind, I'd be thinking, well, I understand this, but is it true? Is it the best information? So a teacher can do that same thing for you. They can clarify. They can help you sift through the multitude of resources and narrow in on one that works for you. The other side of this too is that they can point you in the right direction of other things they can learn who you are. And as an artist who is more mature than you, more wise, who's been in the world longer, they might have the ability to recommend mediums and other things like that. This is one of the biggest things that was exciting for me as an art teacher. A lot of the kids that I worked with, I started teaching them in elementary or in early middle school, and I got to see some of them all the way through graduating high school. And for almost every kid I taught, there was a moment at some point where they found their destined, fated medium. I don't actually believe in those things, but in some sense, that's what it felt like. I had a couple students who struggled with drawing for years, and then finally when they discovered acrylic or oil painting, everything clicked. A lot of students who ran into the same thing with three-dimensional art, which is not my strong suit, but fortunately I had some good colleagues that I could link them up with. 
there is something to an art teacher, a mentor, being able to recommend, hey, I think you might like gouache. Have you tried digital before? You do a lot of drawing in pencil, but I noticed that you don't erase much. Have you considered ink? Have you tried doing watercolor over the top of your ink? An art teacher, an art mentor, can point those kinds of things out to you because they have the time and bandwidth to learn who you are and potentially narrow down your field of research, just like I mentioned with the books, the resources, instructors, and classes. So an art teacher is a human, a human who is interested in and experienced in the same field that you are. And so while they might struggle to actually teach you art, they can teach you a lot about art in general, and they can guide you in a lot of ways that are going to be really, really helpful at basically allowing you to waste less time on your artistic journey. And one of the most beautiful things an art teacher can do is connect you to other people. Now, in my life, I am still in contact with a lot of my art students who have graduated. They're all adults now, but I still hear from a lot of them frequently. So I have those personal connections, they have those personal connections to me. But inside that classroom, they had connections to each other. They had the ability to work with one another. And when I noticed that things were similar, that these two kids were working on the same kinds of things, I can connect those kids. And they are not always kids. You guys are not always kids. If you are at a college level class, then you can be connected with people who might be colleagues of yours somewhere in the future. A lot of the content that I've listened to and read about good reasons to go to art schools, essentially, is that you are building connections and community. And I couldn't agree more. That's probably the number one reason that you could or should go to art school, especially if you can find a way to get around the financial constraints. The community, the connections with other humans, those are basically the most important things that you're gonna get out of one of those environments. And an art teacher can be instrumental in connecting you to other people. But I think that gives a little snapshot into what the role of a teacher actually is. Now, can you be taught art? I kind of don't think so, but it can totally be learned. The way that it is learned is that repetitious practice, analysis, implementation, and just doing it over and over and over again. A good teacher is going to make the gaps between learning things shorter. They're gonna point you in the right direction, they're gonna simplify things, they're gonna be able to share their experiences, but by and large, art is not a series of epiphanies. It is practice, it's fine motor skills, it's training your eyes to see things. It's just gonna take time. But there are better ways to invest your time than others. And that's where a teacher is going to be beneficial for you. And that is the nice part about understanding this, is that you can continue to look into new strategies. You can continue to take classes and know that all of them have at least the potential to help you moving forward. But it's hard. Learning art is very hard. If your expectations aren't in the right place. And that's actually going to be something I'm going to be talking about, if not the next podcast, but the one after that. That your skills aren't the issue, your expectations are. Well, thank you for listening today. I appreciate the time. I appreciate any comments that you've left. I appreciate you just being here with me. I hope it's been beneficial for you. Thank you to Patreon Who, What, Where, When for your continued support. If you want to check out the Patreon, there's a link to it below. Well, have a good one, y'all. See you soon.